This is how I live. I live. This is what I love. Oh. This is all the things that my dreams have been made of. Welcome to my life. This is what I love. This is what the soundtrack to my life is made of. Music love life. Crystal Jordan, be honest in myself, Mr. Kevin Davis. We are Music Love Life. Welcome to another episode, y'all. That was lackluster. No, it yeah. sounds sad. Are you are you depressed about something, man? I do feel bad. What's Why? going on? So I apologize if I'm a little off today. What happened? What's going on? I hit a dog. Did you really? Yeah, I hit a dog. I was going fast. On the way here? Yeah. How you save that for the show? Yeah. What the fuck? He's been sitting in <laughs> here for like 20 he, minutes. It was a dead dog. Oh, it was no, dead it was already? already dead. How you say that for the end of the story? What? You I just mean, all backwards that, today. He tricked us. He did. That's but cute. no, That's I got to get dead dog off my car, and I, I don't want that. The la- when I left the last time, I called Kevin because there was a... <laughs> that's I right. pulled out and right. two deer ran across the street. I was like, okay, that's right. She weird. called me all shaken up. Then a then a possum, and I'm definitely afraid of possums because they look like a a a, a, a zombie rat. So a, a, a possum came out after the two deer, then a dog. And I was like, okay, Kevin, did you see all these animals? And this is before I get to Camelton Road. It's you. No, no. It was weird. They it freaked me out. a horse on you. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. You, you nearly hit three animals. I did. You. I nearly hit. But I was just like, please, the possum, get mess out of the road. Then a dog. I was just like, and this is all within like two blocks. Like, At least I think it was a dog. It was near here? Yeah, it wasn't too far. Okay. Yeah. Well, we have a guest with us today, as we're just rudely ignoring him. <laughs> because Kevin like, was tripping with the, the dog <laughs> yeah, thing. Story, it, he did throw me off yeah, with the dogs. dog. I didn't expect him to say that. <laughs> you know, so, Funny so, thing happened on the way over. Uh, yeah. So we have music journalist, renowned music journalist, Amir Shaw with us tonight. Welcome, Amir. Hey, how y'all doing? We are good. Okay. Now, Amir actually was uh he can he did 9010 with us before right mm-hmm. i don't remember what we talked about i remember it was um we were talking about future okay we were talking about that deal that he did with rocco oh yeah right, right, yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah 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 <laughs> yeah i mean grab that mic and pull it to you a little bit more okay yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah that was a that was back a couple maybe like a year ago a right. little, yeah, little over a year, a year ago. ago yeah yeah but that turned out good for um for um rocco and yeah, rocco yeah, yeah that dude. was Genius move, man. <laughs> you think it was Good genius, job. or you do you think he kind of like you just because you don't really do you think he knew? Wh- I mean, you never really know which artist is gonna blow. Yeah, like, I think the fact that he was able to get future on paper like years before he blew up. Yeah, was, man. Yeah, they never tell you about all the other nobodies they got on paper though. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah, probably like, it's probably that's like, true, like, that's a, like you know what I'm saying. You're right. Like he probably got like 50 other artists that never made it. Yeah, but, but future was the one that yeah. made it, and <laughs> and that's it, all he needed. Only take one. <laughs> I know a guy that was a songwriter that was <laughs> like 10 people had a piece of him, like different, like it was just like he would go from camp to camp mm. and you can leave, but they're like, well, I got paperwork on him. So if something happens, you know. Wasn't it, Young Thug in the middle of all that too? I think he did a, a deal with like three people or something too. Well, yeah, Thug, yeah, Thug was in a situation like that too where, yep. he, where he initially, <laughs> it was so crazy, he reportedly signed with Gucci first right. for like 10,000. I think Gucci like took like 10,000 out of his pocket. Like, yeah, man, mm-hmm. sign this. <laughs> He signed that, and then like I think when Gucci went away, he went in, went in jail. I think you know for a couple of years, Atlantic what came down and was like you know they tried they signed him, right? And then Three Hundred came after Atlantic and and they signed him. So it was like he was new to the game. He didn't really understand like you know what contracts was about. He was just making music, and then Gucci gets out. He's like, nah, this this my artist. And then right. Atlantic are like, no, we signed with him. And then Three Hundred <laughs> was like, no, we signed him. Yeah. So they had there was this big d- deal, and I think Three Hundred actually. Ended up with them So they probably like Just paid Atlantic And play, paid Gucci For that right. contract But you know That's no different Than what Universal did Universal I don't, I don't do y'all, <laughs> y'all know how Gangster Universal was with it How they just signed Everybody mm. They didn't care who was good or who was bad. They signed yeah. everybody. They they had all the singles on the radio were through Universal, like for a, a, a couple of summers, man. But you got to do that. I mean, I would do the same thing because you just never know never who's going to blow What's up. Like numbers game? I was, I read um, a couple, well, maybe a couple weeks ago when we came back from New York, I read Gucci's, I read Gucci's entire autobiography on the yeah. on the plane. A, a book. Yeah. It's a, book. it's a book. It's a book. It's, it's a, a book. really good book. Actually. Gucci <laughs> has a book. And, and it's surprisingly, gonna become, it's going to become a movie. 
Of course it is. Yeah. But it's I, I can tell, I can't remember the guy's name that is the that, that actually co-wrote slash wrote the book. <laughs> um but it you could it's kind of more in his voice to me through some parts. You could tell like, okay, this is like when he and Gucci were having so were a conversation. You ju- were you judging like I was Gucci judging because yeah, you could tell yeah. like nah. You could tell Gucci, yeah. Yeah, you could tell like there were yeah. certain parts it's like Gucci has not been involved for the last chapter at all. <laughs> <laughs> this is all him. But I didn't realize that Gucci had everybody that is hot now at yeah. one point, you know, before he got in trouble. Um, or before he went to jail, he had the Migos. Uh, he had just Atlanta. He had his hands on pretty everybody. much everybody. Yeah. This, and then, that whole new wave. Mm-hmm. It was under Gucci. Yep. Wow. So it's yeah, his I fault. Didn't, I didn't know he was such a a, a visionary. I actually would have more respect for him after reading the book than I did. See, before. but that's that's what I'm saying though. Is he a visionary or was I, he just poised I, to to be the person to catch? He just had a net. He's like the mm-hmm. those deep sea fishers that like the dangerous game or whatever. But to me, it was other people that could have had the net Who? too. I don't. Who? I mean, other people here. Everybody, that everybody, had everybody the net. you gotta think about it. Everyone had the opportunity. Jesus had the opportunity. Yeah. Tips mm-hmm. had the opportunity. No, but were they really popping like like? But Gucci wasn't more popping than than, he wasn't? than, than I mean I don't think at that so. time. I, mean, I think opinion, about like 2010 when he, when he was initially signing all these artists. Mm-hmm. Jesus was still hot. Yeah. Tip was still on his in his bag, and you know <sighs> maybe they were too hot. You're right. Maybe they were. They maybe were so they focused were too on, hot. Yeah, and then yeah, you're right because because you, that's a good point because around 2009 2010 Gucci really wasn't. No, considered like the hottest. He was putting he was, out underground stuff. He was, but, he was but putting not, out mixtapes heavy. Mm-hmm. He yeah. was highly respected, but I don't think he was mainstream. Outs- mainstream, yeah. like Jeezy and Gucci and uh, Tip had the mainstream, right? Route, so okay, before we get into it, because we this our conversation is moving in music. Obviously, we gotta we gotta let Amir. T- First of all, we're here to talk about trap. He's here to talk about his uh, new podcast, Trap History, trap where. History. Yep, you 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 go through the entire thing. So we already done got into the conversation without introducing <laughs> yeah. it correctly. So tell the viewers a little bit about, or listeners a little bit about what uh, kind of inspired you to do this project now. Yeah, so Trap History uh, basically is a, is a podcast, um, and it's based on the history of trap music. So, I mean, my thing is, it was kind of crazy because it started, man, I was in London for the Olympics in 2012, right? And so these... Um, Young women, we were at the bar, uh, me and a co-worker, and these young women kept, they were, they were talking to us about, like, clubs we used to go to. And they were like, yeah, you guys should go to this club because they got this thing they do called Trap Night. And I'm like, Trap <laughs> Night? <laughs> and I'm an Atlanta native, like, you know, me and you are Atlanta natives, so it's like, the word trap has been around since, like, the, the late 80s, early 90s. Right. Mm-hmm. And so we've been hearing this thing, I'm like, damn, they got Trap Night in London? And so wow. at that point, I'm like, damn, it's this thing is like worldwide. It's not just some Southern thing anymore. It's really like a big thing. And so my thing is this, it's like, I think when it comes to black music and black culture, there's always like some mainstream people that's trying to take credit for what we've done. And I'm not sure if you guys like read up, but ABC News did this article saying that Calvin, um, Calvin Harris was the originator of house music. Did you guys see that article? No, David Guetta. David, David Guetta David, David, yeah. Okay yeah. so What? A yeah, they did this, were, yeah, a lot of people were upset People about that People were upset And it's yeah. just like Yo house music Come on bro Like So wow. but that's what happens though If you don't really control your history You don't right. control your narrative Right mm-hmm. They Somebody tell the story for you, you. Mm-hmm. Oh you mean like how uh, Molly Cyrus was known for twerking? <laughs> <laughs> of course <laughs> Exactly <laughs> Inventor Molly, of the twerk Yeah she invented <laughs> twerking And it, it, people in New Orleans Like what the hell <laughs> <laughs> It's just like Come on So my thing is like Being an Atlanta native I'm like okay Let me tell the story The way it is So people can know Where it came from How it kind of grew And just You know Just give a real uh, You know Some structure History about Where it came from Respect Um, Yeah So I wanted to Kind of do it In a a narrative form So um, It's not It's it's a podcast But it's 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 like It's it's narration And I'm telling the story So I have different people That's give You know That's giving like Insight uh, Different quotes Of different artists Talking about The genre um, so yeah, that's basically it, man. Just a just a history lesson on trap music and and where it comes from. So the I first started. episode, I got a chance to listen to the first episode, and um, you you're speaking with another um very very well respected journalist, um, Maurice Garland. Um, and you guys are kind of going. It's interesting to kind of hear the conversation because different people. There's not really clear on mm-hmm. who, even amongst the culture, kind of created it because it seemed mm-hmm. like you know. I'll let you kind of explain, like, Tip definitely, you know, blew out the water. But what was interesting to me is that the person that is responsible for it, 
that people could really give it to really had to be somebody that that fit the look. Like, yep. you know, looking at it from, as a publicist, it's like there always is imaging and everything. It's like, okay, you were doing it, but you don't really look like what we want to accredit it mm-hmm. to. So explain kind of how you, if you feel like, you know, mm-hmm. Tip really did get that because of his him having everything, to, the whole package, rather. Oh, yeah, no, nah, his, his time, we go into this in, in, in the podcast, in the first episode, we go into, like, the fact that it took, like, this mainstream, well, this guy who could kind of touch the mainstream and the streets at the same time, mm-hmm. and Tip was kind of that guy. He And he, he was smart to brand the term trap music. Even though trap had been around in Atlanta since the early '90s, he was the first guy to kind of, t- kind of, brand the term, and he was a guy who could make radio like he he could do both. Like he could be in the streets and he could also put on a suit, and the ladies be like, "Oh, that's Tip," you know what I'm saying? So that was that was a big thing. But like decades before that, you know, you had guys like Sammy Sam the Hitman, Sammy Sam the Hitman. You know what I'm saying? You had the Hard Boys, and Hard Boys, Kilo Ali. You had all these rough rappers who were from Atlanta, but they couldn't really. They were just street guys, and they really couldn't. I got a theory on that though. Go ahead. Because I because li- I listen to the pilot, and it's it's a dope pilot, by the way. I really like the podcast. I have a theory on that. Yeah. So Hard Boys, uh, Kilo, Sammy Sam. With with respect to like booty music, because you know that was music, Kilo, yeah. Kilo, and yeah. and Sammy yeah. Sam kind of sometimes had songs like that. Mm-hmm. Hard boys, not at all, but yeah. them those two guys they did. But what I noticed, you know, I went back after I listened to your podcast, I went back and listened to some of my favorite songs from the Hard Boys and stuff. And what I noticed was those groups were still, even though they were Atlanta and their their dialect was Atlanta, everything mm-hmm. about them was Atlanta. Their music was still. Copying other coasts Oh yeah Hard Boy sound a lot like West Coast West Coast, Coast you And right. they had some samples Like the New York guy yeah. You know what I'm saying uh, And with Except for Ghetto Mafia Ghetto Mafia kind of did it differently Yeah, yeah But yeah. Hard Boy Sammy Sam uh, Those guys used a lot of samples It was something that sounded like something else Yeah T.I. When he did his version of it It was mm-hmm. very Atlanta Oh yeah And even though He brought in like All those features And the producers there, I think the, the The combination of him Doing the Atlanta sound With those featured names That were on the album Because I think mm-hmm. Jazzy Faye was on that first album uh, Terrell DJ Toon DJ Toon Yeah, yeah. like it, it was just It was so big mm-hmm. And it was also so Atlanta mm-hmm. And he could And he could rap his ass off yeah. Right And the girls thought He was good looking Yeah And I think I think Yes, we did. We we always thought he was good looking. So that's why it not, had to be him. He was not polished though, because I remember working with him early, right, right mm-hmm. before trap music was getting ready to come out. He was he definitely has changed oh, yeah. a lot. So yeah. I think that now when you look at him, it's easy to say that he could fit that mold because he could put on a suit. But at that point in time, LA kicked him to the curb. He wasn't really <laughs> able. Like he, he he wasn't. You know, now he's funny and you know he's, we've seen him mature. But at that point, he really was more mm-hmm. street, still just can't, cute. Still can't I mean, speak very, English though. Very <laughs> cute, look cute, but not polished. But I think the polish he was working on that, and his mm-hmm. he, he was smart enough to have a team that understood the importance where maybe you know some of the other people didn't have that. That team, Jason Jeter, and some of his people oh, yeah. were kind of, you know, a little bit more, had more foresight than maybe some of the other artists. But to me, that's why it was, though. Yeah. Because it was the first time, if we, if we remove Dungeon Family, because they're a whole different oh, alien. Like, yeah. yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But everybody else in Atlanta, were, they were still copying everybody else. Right. Well, not necessarily, cause, because, you got, all right, now, you're right about the hard boys, because at that right. time, Atlanta didn't really have an identity right. in the early 90s, because we were just trying to figure this rap thing out. And bass music was like the prominent music in Atlanta, but that was still kind of Miami a little bit. Though. And it yeah. was still it was still yeah. Miami. Yeah. It was still yeah. Miami a little bit. Yeah. And then Outkast comes and said, "This is Atlanta. And this is what Atlanta sounds like." I right. think what Outkast did was it kind of like paved this Atlanta sound. Mm-hmm. You know, so this is what it's gonna sound like for you to come to Atlanta, and this is what what rappers in Atlanta should sound like. And mm-hmm. so after Outkast comes out of '93, I think when it Southern, Southern playlist of Cadillac funky mm-hmm. music. That kind of lays the groundwork. And so after that, you have artists who would say, okay, this is that Atlanta sound. Mm-hmm. And by the time we get the tip, he's an, he's really an Atlanta artist doing mm-hmm. Atlanta music. And this is this is what it is. Yeah. But yeah, well, it's it's you know, it's it was been a multiple like artists like uh you say Ghetto Mafia, um a damn shame. Yeah. Uh man, so many like underground, like um the D Diablo, CMP causing much pain. Like it was so Diablo. many the Diablos like <laughs> I don't know them. No, no, CMP causing much pain. They were, from, they were they were from Pierre Homes. Right. <laughs> real real street dudes. Uh man, it was it was but I my my thing was though, was just because of because of how tip that first album saying trap. The the dope boys in the trap song I think it was is that the one that was on I'm serious dope boys in the trap right yeah yeah that was on yeah it was in the hook yep I don't know if it's ever been in the hook before that had it ever been in the hook yeah yeah actually you need to look look up a damn shame um 
And, and a damn shame. Can we curse on here? Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So, a, a damn shame had a song called Trap Niggas. Okay. Oh, wow. That came out. Ah, that's either. pretty clear. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. Trap Niggas. A song called Trap Niggas. And yeah. It came out like 99, I think. Right. Maybe like a year or two before before Tip's album. So, okay, my question is this because I, I knew, I'm, I'm not from Atlanta. So, coming mm-hmm. here, I heard the term trap, but the term trap was, was like, a way of obviously talking about a drug, adult, mm-hmm. you know, so you know that. So when when did it become like, when did that negative, you know, connotation kind of go away and now it's just like a genre of music that everybody is celebrating, but it's like really they were just talking about what they were doing. A damn shame. Oh, let me see. Now go to, go to YouTube. Okay. Pull up on YouTube. We'll we'll right, pull we'll have that. to pull it up and post it so people can see afterwards. See. But but I'm I'm so I'm trying to figure when out like when did, when did it become like okay this is just a genre like is this it is positive not what we're talking about oh, like, I get what you're saying yeah like first is like this is we're just we're talking about like you know because because hip hop is always narrated what was going on yeah. in the street so when did it become like I mean obviously I was around for trap music but I never thought about why I'm thinking okay he's just talking about the fact that he mm-hmm. smells dope but. Then it, all of a sudden now the dope is not even really attached to it. Really, it's just a genre. A make, so how did that happen? Yeah, from from just being a slang term to right, a genre. Right. Um, I, I think that well, well, I think when when Ti branded it, 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 it's almost like you guys um ever read The Outliers mm-hmm. by Malcolm Gladwell. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Malcolm Gladwell has this thing. He has this chapter about why so many um Jewish um. People in New York become lawyers, mm-hmm, and it's mm-hmm. and he talked about like you know what happened in the fifties and the sixties, right. and it was just this perfect storm, and because of that they all became lawyers, right? right. I think it's kind of like the same case with Atlanta, where it was like this perfect storm. You know, you had Tip drop, then mm-hmm. then Gucci, then Jesus, all yeah. of it's like this perfect storm right. of these guys who grew up in the eighties and saw all this stuff, grew up in the eighties and the nineties, and then they come out at, at this exact. Pretty much in this like five three three to five year span, right? And they pretty much laid the foundation of like this is what mm-hmm. it was to grow up in Atlanta in the eighties right. and the nineties, right? And this is the effect of that. This is the effect of the crack era. This is what right. this is. You know what I'm saying? This Atlanta's is Atlanta's. This is Atlanta's interpretation right. of crack of crack cocaine. You know what I'm saying? This is how we grew up and this is what we saw, right? You know what I'm saying? And so it's this perfect storm where you had these three artists, the main artists, Gucci, Tip, and um, Jeezy, who you know what I'm saying? Who pretty much given their perspective, and they all kind of came at the same time. Mm-hmm. And their their I guess their storylines were so powerful that you had other guys that came after them. Yeah, yeah, other producers who were like, "Oh, let's kind of let's kind of hone this sound." And you, you know, you got the Zay Tobins and you got the the Lex Lugas, and you got all these producers who are kind of making this sound now. Right. Where it's like, it's this perfect storm where all this stuff happened, and it's on. You know what I'm saying? It's just mm-hmm. happened because it was like it was. It, it was just. It was just. It was timing. It was a time think, that. It was a timing. Yeah. yeah. A Atlanta timing was thing. like people were. Tr- people, New York was had been where people kind of gave hip hop credibility, and then it kind of switched to where it was like now at, Atlanta and the Southern rappers are really what is 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 uh, defining hip hop at the time. So that makes. <laughs> are you, you know laughing? Because what's, what's so crazy about that is when we got on, like for real, got on. It was the worst music. It was the worst time in Atlanta music possible. Dun, dun, dun. Oh my god, <laughs> that was the I, I, that was to me the worst. I don't, I don't know. I don't even say it's the worst because like, because the thing man. about let me say about Atlanta though, man, and, and and it's so crazy. I was I was in um the Bay Area maybe like two or three years ago, and um, a Guru, the, the the engineer who engineers for for uh, Jay Z, mm-hmm. he was talking about like how how um. He's talking about like like music, how how music genres kind of how music changes over time, right? He's like, you know, if you in New York, this is gonna be the sound. If you in LA, this is gonna be the sound. He said something about Atlanta. He said Atlanta kind of recreates itself within like a span of twelve months. <laughs> no, he said he said he said yeah, he said legit. Atlanta just keeps yeah. recreating. Yeah. And so the thing is, is like, in order for you to get to like some good trap music, you had to go through Snap. You had to go through Crunk. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like you, because these kids are just experimenting. That's fair. Yeah, they That's they fair. experimenting yeah. with different sounds, and some of it sounds right. goofy and and crazy and and it just insane. Went, it just, and- just kind of meshed all. First, it was like. People were talking bad about Snap and cr- and then all of a sudden it became like, oh, that's gone. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah. Like, yeah. But it's but that's how it is. So it's yeah. like 
these kids know that yo, we finna we gonna we're gonna like experiment with stuff right. and not be scared. And that's one thing yeah. you have to kind of credit with like these young kids who are coming out of Atlanta is like they're yeah. not really scared to like experiment with sound, yeah. experiment with the way they're using their voice. When people heard Young Thug, they had never heard anybody who sound like that. You know what I'm saying? Like these guys True. are coming up with different ways mm-hmm. to say crazy stuff. Now it sounds right. crazy to 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 like hip hop purists because it's like hip hop purists are like, man, what the hell is this? This right. this shit is what the hell is this? Right. But it's like in order for in order for Atlanta to continue to grow, it has to recreate itself by putting out music that no one has ever heard before. So that's it, it's sustain it's sustainable. So it, even with the snap why we era, let it go. Yeah, even with the snap era, it's like it was kind of whack music, but. I appreciate the snap era because right. it was something that nobody had ever heard before yeah. in hip hop. No one ever heard about people snapping their fingers. Then music, <laughs> like it's so simple. Yeah. It's but stupid, but yet the nation was doing the it. Nation was yeah. doing it. Yeah. But you know what? I think we're gonna get nothing but more of that too. I mean, the, just the fact alone that artist development is something that just like destabilized and went, and, and labels are not uh, yeah. investing money in that anymore. And now, like, there's more access to the tools now. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, a lot of kids can make beats on their phones or they can record, so on and so forth. Yeah. So it's they're, wide they're open. creating the sounds organically, mm-hmm. even though they're using, you yeah, know, using electronic like instruments. Electronic. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. there is an attitude among millennials and then the generation after them that they're not, there's, there's not a respect or a need to to pattern themselves after the past. They don't have that same sense yep. of respect. So where you had before people in a um I guess our generation were like, oh, they wanted they wanted the cosign of uh, people yeah. behind these, right. you know, they don't give a they don't even I don't was I don't know who Tupac is or I don't care about Tupac or Biggie or whatever mm-hmm. like that. So there's not the same connection to the past now with the younger generation. So they're just like, whatever. So I don't so okay, Amir is what is happening now, like with, I guess they call it mumble rap. I don't know if there's another <laughs> term for it, but is that all still considered trap music? What Migos are doing and what uh, Young Thug is doing and, and that that whole baby, little baby, like this whole, is that all still in the trap umbrella? It's, it's under the trap umbre- umbe- umbrella, but it's, so these new guys, they're kind of experimenting and they're calling it drip music. Okay. okay. <laughs> so it's, so there's, <laughs> so it's a whole nother level of, Drip drip. Gotcha. Yeah, so yeah. it's you know, it's still kind of trap, but they like, yo, this um you it's know their own interpretation. It's, it's all like their own interpretation of trap. So it's almost yeah. like a subgenre of trap called drip music. Wow. And this is like the almost like the fruits of my labor of trap where mm-hmm. I'm I can buy diamonds <laughs> now. I can you know what I'm saying? I can oh. be dripped up. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like this okay. so a little baby and, and um my man Gunner yeah. from College Park, like they they got you know, they they on that drip. Mm-hmm. That's all that this whole thing, drip or drown. So that's the whole thing, right? Wow. It's, it's, you know, but, and it, it's funny that you say mumble rap. Um, I'm writing a book too about this whole thing. And so um, I think I actually respect mumble rap. You, you know, I think, I think mumble rap is important. Um, because it's you know it's what's so funny is define respect. <laughs> I respect it because it's like explain why it's important. I explain it, man, because it's like um, if you think about it, right? Mm-hmm. Like when we were kids, right? We we kind of spoke in a language where our parents didn't even know what the hell we were talking about, right? Right. So you know, mumble rap is almost like a conversation between these kids that they're having with each other. Now, if you're from Atlanta, like, I understand Mumble Rap because I know what it sounds like. I, and you probably, too. Like, you know, right. guy in the street, you go on camera in the road, you, can, you hear people I mumbling when they're talking. Right, right. So all they're doing is mumbling. This, this, the way they speak regularly, they just putting it over beat. Okay, and so that it's makes like, sense. It's a I, conversation between themselves. And then if right. you don't understand it, it ain't for you. That's I'm fair. talking to my peers. Mm-hmm. I'm talking to my peers who know when I walk in the room and I say, what up, folk? Right. They know what the hell I'm talking about. And I don't, if you don't know what what up folk mean, I don't, it ain't for you. <laughs> but if you know yeah. what what up folk mean, right. you, wanna know, you, you part of that you, right. you part of my family. And right. I'm talking to my family. I ain't, I ain't whoever else don't understand what we talking yeah. about when we mumbling. Right. It ain't for you. Okay. Wow. That's, <laughs> so, okay. I can respect that. <laughs> that's, I can respect it. Because I remember when I moved here, I was like, okay. And I remember, t- you know, speaking of TI and different and and a bunch of of uh, grand hustle at the time and I'm like they they don't really open their mouth <laughs> like, for someone like from an outside I'm a writer right. so I was like you know having to do I did like DJ Toom well DJ Toom did but like there was a couple of artists that were signed to them and I'm thinking like 
I'm trying to figure out like he's all the consonants are just kind of running together like they're not like they really just don't open their mouth. The sad part about that, I work with. I'm I'm not even gonna say his name because I don't want to disrespect him. But I work with one of the guys who got signed to Grand Hustle before he got signed to Grand Hustle, and his mouth opened. But when he got signed oh, to Grand Hustle, his mouth to... stopped opening. <laughs> oh, wow. Mouth. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> wow. So they made him mumble. <laughs> wow. His mouth stopped so opening quite as loud as okay. wide. <laughs> but it is like, if, you, if you're if you not from here, and I've heard other people say that too, you have to kind of get used to it. And yeah. being around hip hop, I had to be like, okay, okay. I'm trying to figure out, because you don't want to seem like you're not, <laughs> it's not for you. You do got to learn to speak. You, I don't want to speak, no, you but I had to, to learn how to, learn I had to understand. Understand. learn how to understand it. I did because I, w- I literally was doing bios and, and I did not, I would have to sit and listen, right, rewind it. Back and to understand <laughs> like, what, what? what they're saying. Yeah, now I can understand it, but at first we, I was totally thrown off. So that makes sense if you're sounding like that and you're putting over music. you just talking to your peers. Okay. That's what, because that's what yeah. rap is. It's right. talking to that's your true. peers. Mm-hmm. If you go true. to New York, they saying son. They right. they talking to their peers. You go right. to L.A., you know they got their own slang out there in L.A. So right. they they talking to their peers. You know what I'm saying? That's if you think about it, hip hop has always been like this thing about where I'm from and right. this is how we act and this is how we right. talk and this is how we dress. This is how I see the world. And you're gonna come to my my place. Mm-hmm. I'm not coming to you. Right. You're gonna come to me and you're right. gonna follow me on this journey. And if you like it, that's good. If you don't like it. Forget you. I think what's crazy about mumble rap, though, is that whereas uh, a New York rapper from the 90s and a New York rapper from now would probably still have the same <laughs> type sound with the uh, mumble rap age, I think that that changed the way Atlanta people talk, too, though, because I'm a little older, so I didn't really, I don't really understand a lot of the mumble rap stuff. But, mm-hmm. you know, five years before that, I could have completely understood what they were saying. So I think that that's, mumble rap is different because it's inside the city, it's completely changed. Yeah, that, and that's oh, yeah. true. I think that, but there's just a different, the, the East and, I mean, the North and South are so different in how they, what's considered cool and what's considered, because there was a lot of cultural differences that I, I mean, guys don't, you know, New York and even Midwest guys are very cool. They don't really, they're not dancing. They're not, boot, like, you're not mm-hmm. going to see a dude that other people respect mm-hmm. booty shaking. Like, that's not going to happen. So when oh, I no, moved we did here that. and I was like, whoa, we these guys that. are like snapping and, and, and doing routines. That's not, that's not considered masculine in certain areas. So I think there's just a whole different culture. Well, a lot of things that the young kids do are, may not be necessarily considered masculine. Right, and now, I think I think totally part different. of the problem with with mumble rap is the age gap. I think it's it's like the first mainstream genre of of rap music mm-hmm. that made a lot of rappers feel old. I think you're right. <laughs> For real, like yeah, you're right. Like I don't understand this. What is this yeah. shit? Yeah. And we're still right. and we used to bars. We right. used to real like that's yeah. real rap. That's what I grew up on. That's yeah. the real rap, and that ain't yeah. It's not bars. Yeah. It's yeah. Mumble. You're, you're right. It, it, that's 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 an interesting point that you said, man. Because rap is like for almost forty years old now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you know it's what I'm the saying? same so, age. Legit. Jay-Z. It's about the age of Jay Z. Just maybe a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like, talking about years. talking to peers, the, the people that really like Jay Z are the ones that we grew up with. Jay Z. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. We he he's been communicating to us the entire time. <laughs> yeah. And now you feel like, wait a minute, what I'm a this? part. Of, I'm a part of this culture. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. But I don't understand that. So that's. And they're like the, and then too, like I said, I, th- I still think there's a difference in the, the attitude because, like, you know, if you look, okay, Jay Z, then someone, even like, there's always a level of respect and looking mm-hmm. up with Kanye saying that was my big brother, I looked up to him. The little young, they don't look up to nobody. They're just like, we're here, we're doing this. What y'all up to? Like, and then and then now the older ones are like, well, let's get on that shit. <laughs> like because mm-hmm. they're yeah. doing it. Like let's let's collaborate with them. But there's there's just a difference to me in the in the. It used to be about paying homage and mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, because I mean Jay Z and Nas and all those guys. I mean they're legends, but that's it. They don't for, understand for, rap. for a population of people. That's our parents' music. It is. I mean, like yeah. Jay Z is Anita yeah. Baker. That is. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah. it's yeah. it's it's weird, but it's yeah, it's legit. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, I, I I think you're right, man. This is a, you, this is like the first generation where the hip hop kids are having babies. These are hip hop kids' babies, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, you know what I'm right. saying. Yeah, so that's true. this ain't this ain't Puff. This is Puff's son. Son. Yeah. And you got to think about it. So that first generation of hip hop kids. 
they grew up on their parents' music, which was like Al Green and you know what I'm saying? So right. it's a yeah, whole different dynamic. Yeah, they didn't that's even totally different. like so Jay Z and Nas his parents, they were playing jazz and, yeah. and he was hearing like, you know, <laughs> Gladys Knight. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. Like that's what they that's grew true. up on. That is very true. And, and so these kids are growing up with their parents listening to Snoop and Jay Z and Nas and Outkast and <laughs> And be crazy, like you know, Soldier Boy. Even, yo, yeah. so, yo, yo, that's that's a good point, yeah. man. Because it was like, yo, Soldier Boy has even like inspired some kids. My no, kids love Soldier Boy. Boy. Was the biggest thing at that right. time. Like Soldier Boy was, was also that, the um, one. It was like, hey man. That's where we started. Like, that's yeah, where we took our hands off. Like, oh, I don't know, bro. I don't know if I can co-sign this anymore. Soldier right? Boy is the father of I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, I agree. Yeah, it started with with, with wow. Soldier Boy. But what? I mean, I, I think it's important, man, because the, in order for rap to grow, right, you got to keep experimenting. Yeah. yeah, You can't you can't stay the same. True. And I think um, this last Eminem album, um, my my good friend Rodney Carmichael, he he writes for NPR, and he was talking about he like trashed. Uh, Eminem Because he's like You know Eminem has gotten to the point Where he's like That old guy That's like Get off my lawn You know what I'm saying Because he's right. just like Dissing mumble rappers But he's saying He like Migos But he don't like mumble rappers And if you don't spit and You know what I'm saying So it's like You know Instead of embracing These young guys And trying to understand Where they come from It's like A lot of these Older rappers Are sounding like The grandpa Like right. Stop coming over In my grass And go away kid You know No one used to go To Sharon Showcase Man. <laughs> And Freak Dance I did yeah, that's why I don't bother me when I see them dance. Cause if you didn't dance at Sharon Showcase, oh, yeah. then you were, you were lame. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. like it's just different culture. So and it's that totally different. Right. I yeah. mean, yeah. I, where I grew up, if you were if a guy was dancing, he was suspect. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it just it's just different. The cult, and then now hip hop is more inclusive of a lot of things that it didn't used to be. You know what I mean? At one point, so you know you got kids with. I mean, the the six nine like. To- that looks totally, yeah. totally mm-hmm. would not have been cool. But now it's just, it just seems more lenient and more embracing to to differences and different ideas and different looks and things like that. So. Well, you know what? Because even when I think about uh, about it in terms of production, we grew up listening to our parents' music. Like we would clean up on Saturday morning, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, and kind of turn on the old school records. Yeah. And when we started creating hip hop, we would sample those records. Right. Yep. Right. So yep. we had access to actual vinyl. Right. Kids nowadays don't have that. Yeah. Nor do no, they care. Right. They don't, they don't yeah. have that. So they're not. Dude, if they sample something, everything is in your pocket. Yeah, well, that's every song if ever. They sample something. It comes from YouTube, not yeah. because it's they not went the to original, the thrift store not and, and grabbed the some original actual vinyl. record. They don't even yeah. know. They, all they know is the sample record. A lot of them don't even know the what the original would be would be. Right. So. Yeah, my it's daughter, who is a person who likes music, was listening to that Trey song, song where he said, um, uh, I don't know, it was the Fuji song, though. Oh, okay. He was nah, like, nah, nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, she was like, yeah, that's Trey. I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me play some. And she was embarrassed because, yeah. you know, she's really into music. Yeah, my daughter is, too. So they, she, but, but, then, but she grew up listening to what I was listening to, which was Snoop and, you know, yeah. edited versions, of course. I think that's part of the fun of music, though, is finding out where the samples come from. Yeah. Really? I, don't know, yeah, I think I like doing I that like back in the day. Yeah. yeah. I, I was actually, man, I, I I was at a party and Quest Love did an entire set oh, so where dope. he played the the hip hop song. He played the original sample. That's dope. Mm-hmm. The entire that was the entire part. He did an entire that an entire part, and so it was like it was basically like digging in the crates. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'm so sure. you got to hear where like a lot of these Jay Z songs came from, a lot of songs from the roots. You kind of got to hear the samples that they were actually using. That's like dope. That, that was a, you know he's a he's like ridiculous. he's an iconic person. So that's that's cool. Yeah. Now speaking of music, we see that uh, I think we talked about this last week. Fabulous. Not last week. Maybe three week weeks before. ago. When it first happened. No, we talked about the fact that he was being indicted, that that the state decided to still press charges against him, even though his girl well his his girlfriend at the time decided to drop the charges. And the state picked them up and secretly has been (laughs) planning to, to to um to prosecute and and I think for like twenty years, like they have a serious sentence based 20 on twenty years never happened. Well, okay, but I'm just saying they have a whole indictment. We need to see a tooth. First well, of it's all, New York. it's that. New York too, though. New York I, is no. We not, I need to see a tooth. Okay, New York. we're not doing that right now. Right, I need we're to see a tooth. That. Twenty years. Obviously, they have enough to put a case, bring a case against mm, him. But a, we just it just came out today. It's that a real grainy video. Fabulous and Emily have gotten married. So. 
<laughs> to me, that's like super obvious. Like I would have, if, if he has someone consulting him, right. I don't know why they told him that would be a good idea. That looks super hey, that's obvious. What she like, want. That's it, what she's been wanting. Like she's she been want. wanting it, but it took it took a prison, a possible prison <laughs> sentence to get this dude to actually marry her. Hey, hey what the God hell? works in mysterious ways. That I don't is know. not God. <laughs> I, not I God. don't know that. I don't I mean hey. he's trying to he's I think he's trying to he's trying to save himself. He's trying to save himself. But I mean, it's so I mean, obvious though. I mean, like she probably need she need him free. She don't need yeah, him, you want him up. free. Because he, she she he's the provider. Free. If he gets locked up, then where's the money going? You know, like oh. it's Okay, so the do you, all right, and this is not even they the got point. kids and you they know. do, but yeah, I mean, you about to get in trouble tomorrow. I, oh, so you want black men in prison? Is what you are saying? Is that what no, you saying? I'm just saying, but at what point do we save a victim from themselves? Like, if I say, who's the victim? Victimless crime. I'm talking to Kevin and Amir. I'm not talking to you. Who's the so victim? Say uh, your sister, right, is or, or little cousin, female in your family is getting beat. And she decides she's so in love with the man that she does not want to press charges. At what point? Say he's the provider, right? She's, I'm not talking to you. I'm not saying anything. I'm so, just, I just, when did she point, get beaten? At what point do you feel like, you know what, for her, she'll be fine. We need to step in. Or do you feel like to keep a black man out of prison, we should let him continue to beat her as long as he continues to provide? What am I getting out of this? What? What, what am I getting out of this? You, do you want to see your sister get beaten? When was okay? she beaten? When I'm she... not talking to you. Do we have any proof of any of this stuff no. you're saying? That's obviously all I'm saying. Obviously, they have a case against him. And he obviously, has a, he obviously has a wife now. So, like, you know, you know of, I'm going to tell you a why. A lot of domestic violence uh, uh, Stop victims. reading these stats from, from the National Enquirer. But it's true, Come on, man. Though. There's, it's true. People that are in domestic violence situations mm-hmm. don't leave because a lot of times their self-esteem is so messed up. Right. They become conditioned to do... They, they expect that. They don't... And they're, they're almost... It's almost like a mental illness. Right. Let's save them for themselves is what you're saying. Well, it's got, like, Stockholm Syndrome. Uh, yeah, that's so what I'm become. saying. Uh, Amir, so you think is fabulous the, is has created a Stockholm syndrome in Emily? Amir, I'm asking. <laughs> have you. we seen the tooth yet? <laughs> have, have, can they produce a tooth? I, everybody keeps saying this. Necessary. Why? That is not necessary. So it's not necessary to prove that he really beat her. So you're saying that he didn't before beat he her unless prison? we actually see a tooth. <laughs> I mean, you gotta have some proof, right? Hey, man, look. Let's just be honest. This is America. Rich people get out of their crimes all the time. So every that makes t- it okay. Every time. That makes it okay. Let our guest talk. Y'all, it's America. I can't. It's turn, America. I wish I could turn your mic off. Hey. Off. That's, that's, that's awkward. Amir, it's America. We need to be rich, America. rich men have, <laughs> right. have been skating around their crimes and punishments for, de- for, for centuries. But what is your point? But I said if it was what? your sister. I don't know what his point is, if, it was your, if, if it was your sister. <laughs> if it was my be sister, okay? she would get caught up in the shit too. Yeah. So you'd be okay, okay with her getting matter. beat. You're not okay, okay no, with. But I, I'm not. It, whether it's right or wrong, we can debate that all day long. But that's it's the, the point. Way it is. is it wrong? Do it's we know that it's wrong? We still have not seen one piece of evidence. We saw a <laughs> granny video. Two, Bill Cosby locked up. We, Weinstein goes free. I'm just saying it's the way. It not goes. just that. The old lady who uh, snitched on or told on Emmett Till is still free. She admitted her shit, and she's still free. So you're saying that because it because it's unjust. If Fabulous go to jail, she better go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Statute of limitations, <laughs> nothing. Oh man, I'm just asking. What do we have other than a video? Showing fabulous Obviously, charges. The state someone. of New York has I don't want to see the woman beat. No, they but don't, don't want to see more. fabulous go to jail. There's a lot of women that I didn't want to see mistreated. I didn't want to see my my high school crush go out with that guy that did her wrong and left her with two babies. But you guess did. what? You did. But guess see what? That. By the way, you were happy you got about that. Right. And every time I get on Facebook, I love it. By the I way, I love it. I found out what Quad's <laughs> name is. Oh boy. Oh boy. Her real government. So get on there. A couple of weeks ago, we. <laughs> Leave her oh, out of this my God. We wasn't talking about her We wasn't talking <laughs> about her Now he wants to jump in All what? I'm saying Crystal is You're ready to indict this dude Based off of The person the, A testimony from a woman Who is now married to the guy So the only that is, that's There's irrelevant. no evidence That's there's, irrelevant there's, The fact no, that she's mm. married to him Is irrelevant the evidence She's working is, against herself The evidence here is A video that we have of him In a car Charging at her and her dad <laughs> With a pair of scissors Maybe or something like Something sharp Right? That's the only evidence. Everything else is her testimony. She is now married. Well, it's probably the prosecutor's testimony at this point. Ex- exactly. It, no, it can't be because he, she, he, she wasn't cooperating with them yeah, all this like time. They, 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 the prosecutors. But, okay, it, so what was their the, evidence then? 
Obviously, they yeah, have they, evidence yeah, that they're going to evidence. court. And it's not obvious. So, He's not. Okay, so if it's well, obvious. They, be honest, they have not gone to court. Talk to me yet. in nine weeks when this court case is over. I mean, well, it's no, probably, the, pro- the prosecutors, they have evidence. Okay. We'll you know see. what I'm saying? But the thing is, is it's, uh, it's going to be is harder it now. Well, well, the is thing it is, enough? it's harder now. She can't testify. If, if she's not going to testify. Mm-hmm. If the family won't testify, the father, the father said that he would testify for Fab. Right. So. Yeah, so you know, it's a it's a messed and up situation. Her, you talking about if it was my sister, her father. That's why I said, what is he getting out of this? What am I getting out of this? How? Because he's clearly the the breadwinner. Yeah, right. She, I mean, yeah. She, what did she even, do? If even her father said, "Hey, baby," I she's mean, a stylist. you know, a stylist, and she hasn't been styling. Yeah, she hasn't been styling. So she's who like, does she style exactly? So she was styling she, him. Yeah, she was styling him. Fabio, <laughs> come yeah. on, bring it, come home, man. You. Yeah, I That's mean, so I, I don't, sad, you know, I think sad. I just make him so let, mad. Let our guest. Well, I, I think he, I think because New York is so strict when it comes to laws and all this stuff, it's, it may be bad for him on that stand because New York, when it comes to crime, they really strict when it comes to crime. You know, um, that's you know that's that's the bad thing that he's in New York. Right. Like, if it was in California, it probably wouldn't even. <laughs> well, domestic violence is not a good thing anyway. Well, like, what I'm saying as far as the laws, like yeah. in New York, it's like in New York, if you get caught with a pistol, you might get five years. You know, what I'm saying? And, it's, and, just, and, it's just like they just in really New York. Strict. You can sit in jail without charges, and you're right. And you you could just sit in New York. Hey. So it's you know that's why I'm saying him being in the state of New York may be a, a more difficult challenge. You know, than he would do yeah, someplace else. Was, yeah, I, but I guess back, I'm just concerned at, at that y'all are not more concerned about the fact that she's obviously a we don't know woman. the extent, but we uh, we know that there are charges. So we so the fact that a woman is being has been abused. Even if she's okay with it, because that that does happen. That that none of you guys are like, okay, nope, he's so, wrong. That's I'm not. I'm not that's going not in cool. there like, trying to like, rescue. I'm not going in there trying to rescue you know, that woman. Do you know that she want to be there? Yeah. Do you know there are more black men in prison in the United States than there are women in prison in the on the globe? What is your point? Let one go. What? We let the small fish go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you catch a small fish, you let him go. Let one go. Let one, one go. go. OJ, oh, wow. Fabo. Come on, we wow. let a couple of them go, man. Wow. And if they have some really damning evidence, okay. Okay, let's see the evidence though. I need to see a tooth or something. I'm sorry about her tooth. I don't. Yeah. Is, are you really? Is, I am. Because you don't seem that way. You don't seem very simple. I, think, I, people, I think he got a smile fixed. Bullshit. That's what I'm saying. Oh, he I, got a teeth I think fixed. he got a smile fixed. I know people fixed. that knock yeah. all their teeth out, some of your clients, and put brand new teeth in because they want to. Fab just helped her get a better tooth. Hey man, that is so insensitive. That's think, one. That's one that's last tooth she so has to sorry. replace later. That's, that's the least he can do. Watching. I am if, so sorry. If this he busts her in the face and knock a smile out, the least he can do is buy a new one. You know what? You guys Probably are got awesome. a car you guys, too. You guys are talking, and I really just hope that that none of your children are right. ever involved in that because that's yeah. just hor- That's horrible. Yeah, Me is. too. But if they do, I hope they get a car. They get a car. A car. Oh, like as a payment? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Oh, nah. I, yeah, what? he went too far for me. Yeah. I jump. He, can I jump off? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would you, would you, would you jump off? May I, may I please jump off? Man, he bought a smile in a car. Hey, hey enjoy yourself. So I'm may almost I afraid to go to our next topic because I can't I'm, wait. What is just, it? No, I mean Ray Carruth, another oh. violent, violent. Murdering black man. He's no, a little no. different. Give us the background because a lot of people might. Because okay. you gotta understand, this is a whole generation. This is a even. whole generation. You're right. It's he twenty years later. Twenty right? years later. Twenty yeah. years later. So mm-hmm. Ray Carruth, who case he was he was dating a girl, got oh, her first, pregnant. Explain Ray Carruth. He was oh, a oh, NFL football. NFL football. I don't know what team he played. Carolina. You might be able to Carolina, play. Carolina Panthers. Okay. He was very obviously very good. I'm assuming he, he was, was a decent. Star player. He was all right. Yeah, he was, he was decent. all right. All right. He was, so, on, he was on the field. He was on the field. <laughs> he was <laughs> caught a few passes. He was decent. <laughs> yeah. So he was messing around with a girl that was a stripper, right? And the girl got pregnant. He did not want her to have the baby. He told her he didn't want her to have the baby. She decided to have it anyway. Mm. Ray comes up with a plan to murder her <laughs> and actually has it done. He pays someone. Shoots the girl. She's in the hospital, pregnant. She ends up dying. The baby ends up being affected because it was in the womb when she was shot. The baby has uh, all ty- he, mental illness, and, and her mother ends up raising the baby. Ray Carruth goes to trial. 
It, it's very obvious. It's not. It, there's no elaborate scheme or plan. Like he so obviously made this. Shit. He obviously made this decision in haste. As a matter of fact, how they there was no him. other other possible suspect. Do you know how they caught him? him and was the, his plan written in crayon? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how they caught him, Chris? He drew a map. He was <laughs> headed to like Mexico, wasn't he? No, that nigga was in the back of his trunk. He was in the trunk. He put himself in the trunk. He was in the trunk. Yeah, I forgot about it. Another another player did that too. Trying blow over. It's not funny, guys. Then he got hungry. All right. <laughs> All right, so it's been 20 years. He's getting out of prison, or he's out. He's out. He's mm-hmm. out. He's free. And he wants to see the sun. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. No way possible. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't even see why this is a topic. Why not? What are you saying? No fucking way. What is coming out of what your you, mouth what you mean, right why now? Why can't he see his son? He nah. tried to mur- like the son would be murdered if he had his way because he wanted mm-hmm. he wanted the baby gone. The whole reason he killed the stripper was not because of her 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 goods because he enjoyed that. How old is this child now? She got to be eighteen. Yeah, she got to be eighteen. Now. Okay, uh, uh, nineteen. Because it, it happened all at the same time. Are, are you helping him out? The mother, his grandmother's taking care of yeah, him. But yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah, like, but, you know, did you pack a sandwich or something for him? Of course him? not. You? I don't know them, but I'm just saying. He, the, he Ray supplies. hasn't done anything for him besides make him make him uh, disabled. disabled. That's it. So hey, I don't even think he deserves to call him his son. There's a lot of parents who have done some fucked up things to their Tried kids. Tried to murder them? Correct. No, that's bullshit. Hell, it's probably somebody in this room that was supposed to be aborted. How I know? Aborted is not the same as shot with a gun in mm. the in the stomach. That's not the same. Close enough. No, it isn't. Close enough. That is ridiculous. Just saying. That is ridiculous, Kevin. That's still the problem is that is it's absolutely still ridiculous. Blood. The that problem is, is that's still his that blood. That is a, a ridiculous. He may not offensive. be proud. I really hope that you don't really believe it's that. It's still his blood. Yeah, that's you know that's a that's a that's a touchy situation because I mean if both, you, both of you guys not. are right because the thing is man it's like um, he even though he gave him a messed up life he gave him life and he didn't want to give him life he didn't want to he was just fucking a stripper and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know I mean, people out. that had kids they didn't want to have. Yeah, but but it's... but right. But then when you try to murder that child in the stunt, you you kind of give up your right to be a parent. You know, not what? to it's... minimize it, but some what some people don't take things very well. Pregnancy is kind of one of those. Okay, things. but that, and it, that's I, it stresses I, you know what? people out. But you know what? So then you he can't come back later. You you let me, you. Let me ask you this. So so I know you guys have seen programs where it's like. Um, the father or a mother may have abandoned a kid when they were younger, and then years later, they meet up, and then it's this forgiveness thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So where do we, where do we draw the line? Because it's like at murder. But but no, but it's I mean a lot of parents have done messed up things to kids, and it's like at at a later age, sometimes people find ways to forgive. So who are we to say that he shouldn't even have that opportunity, even if it's one time? Okay, you got me. You know what I'm saying? Like even if it's one time to say, I agree with that. I saw the guy. You know what I'm saying? Even if even you can feel however you want to feel, fucked up, mad or whatever. But it's like you got a chance. You got a chance to see your father. Like I mean, but his son may not even. I mean, we don't. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, his mental capacity. Like I don't understand. Yeah, you're right because we don't know what if he even if he even even recognize what that means. Yeah. uh, So that's that's another touchy issue. But it's like that opportunity to see this person. It's you know, I, I'm kind of torn because it's like now. If I, you know what, I don't agree with you guys, but I, if the if the son wanted to, yeah. if he had the ability to say, I want to see my dad, to maybe he would like to ask him or what the fuck, you know what I mean, like or just then then that would be different because I feel like you know parents that give their children up for adoption, the it, if the child wants to, then I think they they have a right to have a you know relationship with that parent, but. That, that child, I don't believe he even has the ability because because they did like a follow-up story when he was like 12 or 13. And he he's, you know, he's very, he can't get around by himself. The mother ended up having to, like, she has to be his caregiver. The grandmother, you mean. The grandmother, yeah. yeah. So I just, I don't know. I, th- I think that he, I feel like his prison sentence. Uh, was it long enough? It, it wasn't long enough. And I, but I think that probably if he, if he has any sense of humanity to him, which he may, because you know people can change. Seeing what he did to his child has to be the biggest. Like that's probably worse than a prison sentence. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You right. Yeah. To have to look at his child and you see what he's done to him. Mm-hmm. I think that's worse than those twenty years. I that think he's so too. Been behind bars. But so. I just think you gotta let it. I, unless unless that son 
can say, I want to see him. I would not put that child in, in, in like that, I, especially because the only person that could do that would be the grandmother. The grandmother. Right. She Unless the state, uh, right. And I know but, she probably was like, nah. Heck, no, are you kidding? Like someone kills my daughter, my daughter yeah, you, for yeah. that reason. And I'm supposed to let him. Now I, I, there's a, there's a pastor. One of my friends told me about that. Her, she admitted that her father raped her over and over and over again. Mm. And now she has a relationship. She forgave her father and they have a relationship. I do think that the love between a parent and child is a, is a is a strong like mm-hmm. the strongest version of unconditional love. Yeah. So you you know you have children that that know their parent killed the other parent and they still will have a relationship with that parent that is the murderer, right? I've seen that happen before. Um but in this case because his his actions resulted in that boy's life being I I mean I almost feel like it might have been easier if he didn't survive. You know what I mean? Because his quality of life has been ruined because of his selfishness. But I I just can't even imagine that he would even believe he would have the right to do that. I just think he's not a you're not a father at that point. You've given up your right. I'm it was torn. important for you to get away from it. I'm yeah, still torn. I'm, I'm I understand. Torn. I, I think that's. <laughs> yeah. I understand. It's um. It's it's definitely a a, a tough situation. It's not even tough, though. No, it is to me. Mm-hmm. It's yep. tough. I'm torn. It's definitely it's tough. tough. I, think to in a, I, I think in a lot of ways, and, and particularly women uh, I've seen do this a lot, but despite his transgressions, they think that fathers don't matter. They think that it's easy to just, oh, he don't come around, he don't do that, he don't really, I don't need him, so on and so forth. And we, we kind of get a little too, in my opinion, I think we get a little too comfortable with that. And I think in a lot of ways, when we do connect with our fathers, no matter what they may have done, it heals not only ourselves or, or our own scars, but theirs too. So I I think in in because we got a lot of mixed families we got a lot of abusive situations in in our communities, in our families, and until we're able to actually face those people and those deeds, we all just continue to walk around hurt. I think that's up to it's up to each individual person though to do that, and I think that it becomes. I mean, I've been honest. My my father was a a, a drug addict and did not. Take, did not take his responsibility at all. Now, when I got older, I realized he probably didn't have the ability to do it because he obviously was sick and probably had mental illness that led to him being a crack addict. So I decided, you know, to reach out to him and and would have wanted to do that, but that was my decision. You know, once you kind of give up, to me as a parent, you know, if I decided to abandon my children... It's kind of unfair. We've seen it play out even on some reality TV shows. I think we there's a that we, I was talking on another. Um, I had a conversation with some people about a, a reality star that that was physically abusive to her daughter, and I think that being a parent is hard, and people are not perfect. But once you cross a certain line, I think then the child should have the 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 right to say no. I don't want that person in my life. This young lady is Tommy from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Um, went and was physically abusive to her daughter at school. So there's a restraining order against her mother from the daughter. She reached out to the daughter anyway and ended up back in jail. So that's a hurtful situation. The daughter probably is going to want to still talk to her mother later. She's in middle school. Tommy obviously is has got some other issues going on, but that's still to me different than when you go to the extent of trying to murder the baby and the mother. He was that... That, that's just a different thing, you know? I don't think that Tommy should have access to her daughter, but I think if the daughter decides, I want to talk to my mother, she should have the ability to do that. But I don't think the mother, once you've done, once you've rammed your daughter's head into a locker at, at school, you can't, like, you're doing more harm than good, you know? That we have to give children some type of rights. I believe, yeah. I, I mean, I agree. I think so, if the, if the kid is 19 and 20, he might not be mentally ready to see right. Ray Carruth. Yeah. At 35, maybe. Different. If, you know if what I'm saying? A, if, like, yeah. And, and, you know, yeah. if he's capable at 30, it, may be, asking, it right. may be a different conversation. Right, I than, agree. Than seeing him at 19. I think 19 may be a little bit too soon. Yeah. It may it may need to mm-hmm. take some years And it pass. needs to come from that. him more than it needs to come from Ray Carruth. Yeah, for sure. I, so Ray Carruth probably need, needs to, wants to atone. I mean, that's got to be worse than, like, that's got to be mental torture. 
to know because oh, he sat hell. and thought about it hell. for twenty years. Absolutely. So he probably wants to try to make himself feel better by reaching out, but that's not really his place. I don't. Think. How great of a dad is he gonna be on his next kid? Hey, well, sir, according, sir, to, lining, according to the lining. reports, there are a lot of women that he was having a lot of relationships. You know, I guess he's a, a guy that a lot of women have reached out. And yeah, oh yeah, yeah, probably a lot of dudes too. Probably he's light skin. He is. He <laughs> is. A lot of dudes. Too. I know you guys he probably get, got a lot of butt babies. You guys get a lot of options. <laughs> Eddie. Wow. But, okay. But uh, <laughs> he probably got a ton of butt babies <laughs> trapped up in there, he's just swimming around in someone's. <laughs> no, him. I'm saying, you know, oh, him. Oh. Yeah, you can't. Cause I'm saying, I don't know that he. I don't think. I don't think you get away from that doing something like that. That you don't. bad. Yeah, you don't get away with that. So, I don't know. Some women gonna give him some. No, and, no, he's oh, definitely he's, gonna. He's gonna, he's gonna be a great dad. That. There is nothing. I'm convinced. Yeah, he's good on, he's there's good on nothing that. you can do as a man to stop women from giving <laughs> from you sex. You. Like there's <laughs> nothing you can possibly do. Y'all have a wonderful thing going on. Hey. Like it's a great racket happening. Because there's <laughs> nothing a man can do to keep a woman from. Hey. Jumping over head over heels to, and there's no look that a woman can have that a guy won't still fuck you. So really, yeah, mm -hmm. there's some pretty ugly motherfuckers getting, is, yeah. getting dick. It may not who you want, ugly. might not be who you want. Yeah. But see, the only thing about it is women are mostly more selective than men. Oh yeah, so yeah. that's what they say. Yeah, I think they just say that. I, I think that, publicly. That's a rumor. Isn't that just a rumor? Right. No, I think we are. Because mm. I think women are looking for more. Like, we look at the overall package. Y'all just be like, oh, those are nice titties. I can fuck with those titties. How much do we those weigh? It, how much no. do those titties weigh? How do, you, how do you know we do that? Oh, I, I've, we do. I've been around you all long enough to know that. So it's Even like, the good ones. We're looking at, like, okay, the whole guy. Like, okay, he's not. Okay, so he's six foot, but he's his face is okay. But he's got nice arms. Like, we look at the whole oh, so thing. You're saying women I want the whole overall. Who's got time to do all that? They do. They do. They, right. they, they, they dissect yeah. that whole They yeah. fantasize the yeah, whole, yeah. And we just see the chick We like yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I smash whatever And right. it's be like But she looks like a whore But she got Have you seen yeah, her titties? Like <laughs> no I, You can't see him for the Unless she got dirty tennis shoes And he's like nope I don't give a fuck What else she got going on <laughs> That's only you <laughs> Bitch got dirty tennis shoes <laughs> That's only you Everybody else is still going forward Kevin you fucking somebody With some dirty ass tennis shoes Once she takes tennis shoes off <laughs> Amir Once she takes tennis shoes off she Take got tennis shoes off. just filthy tennis shoes. You like what her pussy? Well, it kind of depends on what type of chick this is, right? No, like, you talk like the Vans. She better just be right? Yeah, right, right. If, she, if she's like one of these eclectic type chicks who wears like dirty Converse. Can you imagine what her pussy smells like? Oh, man. Mm -mm. Dirty tennis shoes, dirty pussy. Got to be some correlation to that. Can we get a study on that? <laughs> I'm not hitting it. I'm not hitting it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I don't know. It. What about... If she, was an, if she was an athlete, maybe. Nope, not Dirty. Dirty tennis shoes, maybe. maybe. Sure. Dirty no, Converse, Dirty Converse is all right. So Converse and Vans, that's a different thing. Dirty Converse and Vans, that's a different thing. Yeah, dirty tennis shoes, and ugly feet, two different things. Ugly feet. Yeah. I'm. I'm I, don't, I, I have feet, never looked at a foot. All told, I, I try I don't, to lick your feet. Do either, you kiss man. on feet? Do you kiss on feet? No, I'm not. I don't, I like don't feet. want to lick at your feet. I don't even want to see I'm not it. A foot <laughs> sock. You can sock them motherfuckers like. I think y'all oh, are lying. Guys do. I guys don't like they don't do a lot of stuff, and then and then they they, what they do, do it. What they do, Chris? I'll tell me what they do. Not, How I'm many gonna... times do they do it in your I'm life? Just... <laughs> <laughs> None. Now it's I started like, over again. You started over. So you got the, zero bodies yep, right now. The odometer right. rolled. I rolled the odometer yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm if you you've had box. sex, hold on. Excuse me. If you've had sex with Crystal, write the show. <laughs> We're trying to figure out how many bodies she has, and she's not being very forthcoming with that information. <laughs> Zero bodies. I'm surprised no one's come forward. <laughs> why, this, why don't guys do that? Why don't guys, I had sex with that woman. Right. Why don't they do you that? Know, I'll tell you why. Because you'll never get it again, and niggas ain't that like that. That is why. It's no way possible. That's You're why. Right. Yeah. That's why. Right. I got a shot. Mom's a word. As long as we both breathe, then I got a shot. Hey, look. I held that for you. You be Ray Caruth. You got a shot. <laughs> Stupid. Seriously. Hey. Yeah. Is my loyalty worth nothing? Are y'all playing this lottery? Are y'all gonna do this thing? Oh yeah. It's tonight. You I want, is, is it tonight is, the last night? You want a pool or something? You want to pool up? No, I'm not playing that dumb shit. I'm not doing it. I'm playing. It's 1.6 billion. <laughs> I did a pool. I did a pool. Even, I don't even play the lottery. I'm going down with it. I, did, I played Friday. I, saw, I didn't even know how to play the lottery. I didn't even know how to play it. I just <laughs> I grabbed the ticket. I did it the last time, though. The last time, I, I don't remember how much it was, but it was a big number, and I was like, it's I've got to get number. in on this. So I went, and I bought like 20 tickets, and I felt like the biggest dumbass Wait, did you do it with Ike? No, when I it didn't. was like 800 million or I something did. like that. Yeah, it was, it was like a studio pool. About everybody it. put in like no, $30. I didn't do, no, I didn't do that because I know if I win, I'm not mm. going to share them. Did they, somebody said Floyd bought like $20,000 worth. 
He probably did. I did hear he bought Stop. like two, maybe it may have been two thousand. You know what? He'll probably yeah. like, like win. He'll yeah, probably he'll win. win. One point six million. Everybody gonna lose together. It's nobody's winning this. Why the, pr- the gonna, price was going up? The price went up mm-hmm. and the odds went down, and people still do. Right, come on, yeah. Yeah. you have literally you have more of a chance of dying from a vending machine. I yeah, read that. I, I heard it on NPR. Yeah. Yeah. dying by a vending machine falling on top of you. I'm not doing it. I felt so stupid. I did fall once, but I'm telling y'all, I felt. I felt so stupid because I felt like, you know, smart people, and I consider myself a smart person, they know this is just like a racket to like mess with your head. Like yeah. and it's and it's like the better thing is to like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna achieve my success by but then you know, Oh no, don't compare those. I, yes. You can't do that. I'm gonna work hard and you <laughs> oh can't God, compare that one point six billion. Yeah, you can't <laughs> compare that. You sound dumb gonna doing happen. that. It's, it's not, not gonna happen. It's not and, and what I found out, I read an article today, they're not even you you know, everybody thought the lottery was supposed to be for schools. Right. Yeah, uh-uh. yeah, they. Yeah, you, I, I, I was listening to to that NPR. They're using the. They are using the money for schools, but guess what they did? Right. The money they were using for schools that's for other shit. Other, yeah. What other shit? Whatever. What Whatever they shit? want. Whatever. Miscellaneous. Whatever. That's yeah, the thing. They, like you don't they know. Wrote, they wrote it in law. That, these people. They really <laughs> slick. Yeah, man. Republicans wrote it in law that if. If um, it's was a discrepancy, it's, was it? What was the word that they used? I don't know what the word. But it was, was. something like at, at wow. their own discretion, like whatever or, they feel right. like this money wow. should go to us. So a great if this year we might need to put this money over in construction, we're yeah. going to put this money in. Wait, wait, wait. Construction. Roads and they- wait, wait. So real quick, what are you guys wow. going to do? What do you guys think about this governor, the the Georgia governor race that's becoming it's like out it's, of control? It's, it's just, I, I'm so sick of it. Like there was a debate tonight. I saw a little bit of it. Before I headed over here, I'm just oh I'm I'm just over it. I'm over you it. You want Stacey Abrams to win though? I don't. I just you don't care at this point. I don't care. Oh wow, I'm excited. Are you? Yeah. You know what? It's I think it's history. Everyone's so optimistic about the lottery. If you thought you can put one chance or your one little ticket, if you get if you can do that, you can vote. Yeah, you could. No, I, no yes. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No, we definitely know that you can definitely vote. I just think that politics. Trump has caused. This whole political thing to become a, a circus, and it's really not Stacey Abrams against Kemp or whatever. It's, it's Trump. Like it's the blacks versus the whites. It is. It's like my friends. <laughs> like, are you voting for anyone that's black? And I'm like, but but guys, like we gotta, you know, that's cool, but we also need to at least pretend that we're listening to what's going on because you're not nah. you're not listening to anything. You're just saying I'm I'm for listen, everybody that's black. Listen. Right? Uh, who cares? What's, I mean, we yeah. have some blacks that are actually tuned in. Nah. I need some blacks that are no no. What do you mean? Tune into what? I want what? us to know what is going on. Most of the people I talk to have no idea what None. the issues are. They're she's just black. aware that she's black, she black. And I'm going to vote for him and he represents Trump. That is not what this should be about. Mm. Well, I mean, kind of wait, kind of shit. wait, wait, wait. <laughs> when do you start voting on the issues? Kind of issue. No one vote. No, you vote. You Aren't vote you who you to? want to win and who's going to be the best at winning. That's well, but that's that's those are often two different things. Obviously, Trump won. Hey, it's tough he was choice. The of winning. It's tough so you choice. want Brian Kim to win? No, I don't. No, oh. I don't. I just don't like the conversation going on around. I want Stacey Abrams to win, but I don't like the conversation. Is what I'm saying. Because people what are conversations saying, don't you like? I don't like the fact that people are saying I'm just going to vote for her because she's black. Yeah. I'm like, but but she actually like is really you know really really a great candidate. Like the yeah. things, but people don't even care about that, you know, and they just see him as another version of Trump. And like, he's, he is really. Yeah, <laughs> so he, yeah. I guess they're not lying. I mean, but okay, if if we didn't, so you're, even, you're listen, saying that if we didn't vote for her because she's black, I like people like, say they voted like, for Obama. It pisses me off when people say I voted for Obama because he was black. Do you think that Obama there are people who great, are was the better candidate? Like to me, it's like if if I, eh, it's just like when I. <laughs> Really? Because people, really? people strategically vote. Like, we didn't, like, a lot of people didn't vote for Trump. They just didn't want to vote for Hillary. That's I, true. I didn't vote That's for true. Obama. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> Either time. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Damn, not even the second time? I didn't vote for anybody. I don't oh, think well. voting is ridiculous. Well, I think damn. that I think they're voting oh, for somebody man. because they're black is an excellent fucking reason. It's just as good as any other dumbass policy reason. They say, they're, hey, we're going to do this, we're going to clean up this, and they go in the office, they do nothing. Kasim Reed right now is... is we don't even... I don't have you seen the education? I'm just saying, like, uh, we have uh, to pay uh, attention uh, to that uh, shit. Like, yo. I saw the nigga in Walgreens down the street late night with his pink eyes and shit. Like Where were you coming voters? from, sir? Where were you coming from, sir? Uh, we're uh, not talk on about Cascade him. Road, Walgreens <laughs> at 3 a.m., sir. Why are you in my Walgreens with Pink Eye <laughs> at 3 a.m.? <laughs> Whose booty were you eating and the juice hey, got in your eye? Hey, I'm hey. just saying. Hey, That's dude. the way you get Pink Eye. Take me out of this. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> we did an event for Kasim Reed. We did. We were team Kasim we Reed. We did. So we did. hey, it, I, I, you got to get on both sides, brother. Come on, another, brother. That's another thing, though. We all know that politics are as oh as much God. as as much as I would like to believe like what the what the platforms are and like, get excited about mm-hmm. the debates. There's so much behind the scenes that once you're a part of that and you see it, it kind of. It can't help but make you jaded on the whole process. Did so, you ever have a high school president race or whatever at your school? They had a president and a secretary at your high school. Unfortunately, Why? it's very much like this. Why we do they win? For the attractive person. Exactly the the most popular attractive person. What? That's all it is. And I don't mm-hmm. think that's a bad reason for voting for Stacey. <laughs> do, you she's know, black. do you know who your dog well, catcher is? That. She black. You, you know who's the city dog catcher? What? Exactly. Nobody fucking knows. She black. You're not, she black. You're not she black. Up she, on black. She, black. she black. She black. She black. She black. She black. Hey, just, I just, I just wish that. Because let's be for real. There are people who are not voting for Stacey Abrams because she's black. That's they true. Are. That's true. And you got to offset them. And Those they don't care about don't care, the issues. Yeah. They are not voting for her because she's black. That's Simply true. because of the fact. Those same. So if you are black, vote for Stacey, right. Stacey, Stacey Abrams. Abrams. You remember the celebration when OJ got off? It was I a celebration sell, in the I, streets. You know what? But Niggas was, was happy in the moment everywhere. And I re, and I don't like that idea. Hey, like man. you cannot be mad, be excited, just like with, with <laughs> Bill Cosby. We can't be the whole argument was, well, Harvey Weinstein didn't go to jail. That doesn't mean that Bill Cosby shouldn't go. I don't think he, he didn't. Went. They both should be in there. Yeah, they yeah, both yeah, should yeah. be. Yeah, we understand. Well, I, yeah, we understand. Yeah. I know y'all probably they had both this. Both go to jail. However, <laughs> Since if he I didn't got go. to choose, <laughs> if, if I got to pick a horse, one of them is going to be named Cosby. I think we've done a good job of offending everybody towards the end of our show. So. I mean, all up through the middle as well. No, I mean, the middle was cool. It was like real depressing. That's why I felt the need. I felt compelled to jump in there and say some real ignorant shit about the people who may or may not be offended right now. <laughs> I think we've hit all the... I think everybody is. I think we've offended everybody. But, uh, Amir, tell us about how we can get a hold <laughs> yeah. of your show. Man, so y'all go to www.traphistory.com. The website is up. You can go to the Trap History Podcast on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. And um, yeah, man, so I'm I'm thinking about releasing it November 7th because November the 7th is the first time that Trap was actually said on a record. Um... Kujo Goody from Goody Mob, wow. who is on an episode, on a later episode, he he uh, he was the first rapper to say the word trap on a rap record, and he wow. said it. Dope. He said it on the Soul Food album, which was mm-hmm. released November seventh, nineteen ninety five. So I'm thinking about putting it out November seventh. I remember that I was so. in boot camp when I got I got that album in boot camp. I wow. graduated and I and we got liberty for for one night. And you I bought that album. album. It's man, like, yeah, it was yeah. classic, man. So yeah. yeah, so that's so November seventh. That's the that's the tentative date we're we're, we're looking at right now. Really sad. Do you have merch available? Because I got yes. merch. You go to yeah, go to traphistory dot com. You can check out the merch, shirts, hoodies. Dope. It's hoodie Dope season. Hoodie. Yeah. Yeah. you know what yeah. I'm saying. You can get you a hoodie. It's cold outside. I need a new hoodie. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Still, you know? it's a, and there's a whole like I I was telling Amir um with the 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 trap museum and there's yeah. just a lot of talk right now. So it's a great time to kind of jump on that. That yeah. uh, feel I got a chance to go to the Have you guys been to T.I.'s Trap Museum? Nope I still haven't been It's quick yeah. to go quick it's not, I was I in I, I went at uh, Nashville this weekend TSU Homecoming Oh yeah A lot oh, yeah. of people I know was, did Was, uh, yeah, was there. Quad there? <laughs> Quad was there Yes Awesome <laughs> Love so your name, would you boo. like to share? Love would you like name. to share her actual name? We could not find what her government name was. Why, why do y'all want to do that? No. I mean, we just it's just it's just information. We're, we're just, I mean, we didn't name her information. You're so biased. Yeah. You're just so biased. Ah, uh, what? You don't want me to be in support of the black woman? And I am a black woman, I, and I'm saying it's okay for us. Yes, to know her and name. your black hypocrisy. <laughs> I'm not hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. Her parents named her. It's becoming <laughs> Quadrafinka. <laughs> Quadrafinka, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. That's that's what Google says. Kevin's friend Quadrafinka. That's that's what's it. That's like what that. Google I like says. That. You it's, like that? Di- okay. I mean, She's from different. Atlanta, right? Got Memphis. to got from Memphis. It's, it's different. I it's like different. That. It's different. Yeah. Quad is a cool way to shorten it up and yeah. make it chic. You know? I like the fact that black people in the seventies were like, "Yo, creative." Get this. Yeah, <laughs> we're not gonna be naming our kids Tom and yeah. I do not like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're not down Shaniqua with it. No. We're gonna do it. 
<laughs> we're finna go all the way. I love that. <laughs> I love that we like d- decided to carve our own yeah. place with these names. Yeah. Even though we're getting discriminated for it now. But. <laughs> right. Like I can't. Well, I don't think now is so much as like, oh, no, it's we now. were Yeah. They, 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 they did a study. They I mean, did studies a about that. Like, but but look at but look at the fact that within I think like twenty years, like entrepreneurship has become most. Oh, so yeah, many you, people yeah. are doing like the conventional job is is kind of it's not there yeah. the way it used to be. Yeah. So before you go to college and you send your resume out. And then people see your ethnic name, you make it discriminated against. But now, I mean, more people are becoming small business owners, and that that whole movement, people are businesses are letting people go and hiring them back as contractors. So the whole landscape of the of the, the of employment yeah, yeah. has changed. So Change. I think that's not going to have as as Don't big. Yeah, but that's that's not. That was out of necessity. Like people are still not hiring people named Quadrifinger. Yeah. Well, but I'm just saying. And I think you and, you and you in a different space too. Right. You gotta think about where we are. That's We're in Atlanta, true. and it's kind of <laughs> easier for you to kind of have that connection to make a business. Shit. You gotta start so your own thing and that, go yeah, yeah, if balls you, to the wall. You if you're in Valdosta, right. or you like in a small town. It's kind of yeah, hard to kind of do true. not get that face tattoo. It's not gonna work yeah, out. Yeah, the face tattoo is not a good idea. But see, she made it. She made it. It works. No, she married a rich dude. Come on, stop it. We we can't keep doing this. We can't keep pretending like these women. Are like I'm gonna leave it alone. With that next episode, we're gonna talk about women and their merits. <laughs> like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> like, share, and subscribe. I don't even know what to say, but we're gonna come back guns blazing next. We're gonna we're gonna, let's we're talk gonna about this? Emily and her stylings. Let's what about there. what's the girl's name that had the book that you guys were upset about Brittany last week? Brenner, Brenner, uh, Body Bundle of Brittany. Did yeah. you know she have you gotten her here. book, Amir? Bundle of Brittany has a book. She Fuck out of here, a book, a book, and an audio book. <laughs> oh. <laughs> An audio book. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know. I, 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 you know, man, you know what? I, I like when people hustle. See? <laughs> Amir is like with all Political the shit. Political answers. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yo, man, if you, if you got a dream, do that shit. I hear you, dog. I, I don't hear care. you. Like, even if you can't do it, do I it. I feel like if you got a dream, stay <laughs> asleep sometimes. Just, <laughs> I just guarantee you, it's, it's, it's a dude. Just it's a dude. It's a guy that inspired Britney. <laughs> I think you could write a book, baby. Right. Like, it's not Britney, but... Yeah, I'm liking Amir. Amir, thank you for joining oh, us. Man, Amir thank is you with for the having me, man. Amir's with everything. Yeah, man. Do <laughs> like it, I'm man. Just, I'm with all of it. That's Let's what's do up. Do it. <laughs>